In this video, I'm going to be doing an art challenge. Does this sound familiar? Actually, don't answer that question. I don't want to get demonetized again. It's an electric eraser, guys. Come on. Obviously, an electric eraser. Fun fact, 70% of my audience is actually female. So don't think that I don't know that you think that that sounded like a v Okay, let's just get on with the video. I'm going to be creating an artwork using an electric eraser, some detractable pencil eraser thing, and also a white gel pen to do the highlights at the end. I will be narrating a horror story for you guys who can't get enough of the stories. I'm going to jump into that in just a minute. But I just wanted to quickly introduce the artwork and talk about what I'll be doing. So I'll be using pencils to set down the base layer, and after that, no more pencils, just erasers and a highlighter. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, all that stuff really helps out. My past few videos did pretty sh So help keep my channel alive, you know, share the video with your mum, your grandma, your dad, your stepbrother, your future kids, make extra YouTube accounts for any family animals, your step cousin twice removed, your great aunt, your great granddad who's passed away, your biological mum that you never knew about but you're actually adopted, sorry to break that to you. You know, just share the videos with everyone, that'd be much appreciated. <laughs> but let's jump into the story guys, let's change the mood up, let's get real serious now, okay? This is serious. Enjoy the video. Like and subscribe. Nobody showed up to my high school reunion. The room was depressingly quiet. Twelve tables I had reserved for the reunion, and twelve tables sat empty. I wanted to laugh, scream, and cry. For weeks I'd worked out the particulars of this event, and even spent a good deal of money to travel back from Europe, just to be stood up by everyone. Can I bring you something, sir? Asked a waitress, as she stepped up beside me, tugging anxiously at the bow tie beneath her chin. I looked to the woman, maintaining a foreign look of indifference. Maybe just a glass of water, I decided. The waitress nodded, a look of pity shifting through her eyes before she turned away and she headed off towards the kitchen. I sighed and turned back to set my eyes on the white tablecloth and the empty dish that sat in front of me. Similarly empty dishes circled the round table. My phone sat beside the folded napkin, and I brushed my thumb over the screen, lighting it for the eighth time in fifteen minutes. Still, no notifications. I'd set out several emails to the group, and not one of my ex-classmates had responded. Bored, I entertained a whim. Let's see what these assholes are actually up to. I breathed to myself, quietly, as I lifted the device. I pulled up a social media app that I had set in an unused folder on my phone, and opened it. I thought for a moment, trying to remember my old password, and successfully logged in on the second try. Gage Borwick, I mumbled as I typed his name into a search bar. He was the first person who had contacted me back when I had reached out to plan this reunion. His profile popped up, and I pressed my thumb to his highlighted name. I waited patiently for it to load, but as the page came up, I immediately furrowed my brow. The account had been memorialized. His page full of misuse from families and friends, and prayers and condolences from acquaintances. Gage 
was dead. And looking at the dates of the posts, he had been for at least two years. It didn't make any sense. I switched back to my email and looked through the string of messages between myself and my ex-classmates. Sure enough, there he was. Gage Borwick, 03, saying that he was happy to hear from me and was excited to get together with everyone for the first time since the last reunion. The one I'd missed since I was overseas. A knot formed in my stomach, and I swallowed harshly. I looked over the other names in the group emails, and then, almost frantically, navigated back to the social media app. I searched another name. Alice Kennedy. Memorialised. Killed in a mugging four years ago. Jake Telly. Memorialised. Killed in an accident at work six months ago. Wendy Grayshaw. Memorialised. Killed during a convenience store hold-up seven years ago. My heart pounded in my chest, and I left the spelling of names more to autocorrect than the dexterity of my shaking fingers. Olivia. Memorialised. Brian memorialised, Alexander memorialised, Paige memorialised, everybody. Everybody was dead, murdered or killed in strange, often unexplained accidents. Everybody but me. The phone slipped from my quivering grasp landing on my silverware and sending a sharp ring through the room before bouncing to the floor. I felt like I was gasping for breath as my mind raced. Who had I been messaging back and forth with? Who had sent me emails agreeing to attend the reunion from the accounts of my deceased classmates? Who would? Who could ever do that? My throat was dry. I wanted water. I had asked the waitress for some. Remembering that, I looked over towards the doorway the woman had left through. Somebody else was standing there. They were dressed in all black, baggy clothing that hid their body shape and had a hood pulled up around their head. A black veil, impossible to see through, concealed their face. I stood from my seat, knocking the chair over as I felt a sense of dread grip me, and every instinct within me screamed, Danger. I kept my eyes on the stranger as I backed away, trying to remember exactly where the exits were, so I could beeline for them, when I built up the nerve to turn and run. The front entrance was too far away, but there had been a set of double doors to the side of the room. I wasn't sure where they led, but I could at least get a barrier between me and the stranger. I glanced over my shoulder to get a glimpse of my escape route, and in that moment, there was a flutter of movement. The hooded figure was fast, and their footsteps made almost no sound. The distance closed between us quickly, and I turned to run as I let out a shriek of desperation. I reached the set of double doors and hit them with my shoulder. But to my dismay, they held fast in place and I bounced back from the impact. They were locked. Heat, like warm water from a shower head, spread through my body, originating from the small of my back. Then it hurt. I tried to move, but rather than taking a step, 
my legs just collapsed underneath me, and I crumpled to the floor, landing on my back. The hooded figure stood above me, a knife in their hand glinted red with blood. My blood. The figure crouched down, bringing their veiled face close to mine. They regarded me patiently, and then spoke in a quiet whisper. I was wondering who I had forgotten. Of course it would be you, David. I can't believe it slipped my mind that you'd gone overseas this time. I grit my teeth against the searing pain that continued to rise within me, lacing out from the wound in the base of my spine. I managed to speak. This time? I asked, my voice a strained hiss. Congratulations, David. You've won this round. Well, technically I've won this round, but I always win. Coming in second does have its benefits, though. I didn't understand what they were saying. Why? Was all I could muster. Plenty of reasons. They whispered. But you'll have some time to figure them out. Since you were the last one left, you get to keep your memories. You're insane. Please stop. Help me. I don't want to die. I gasped. The hooded figure shook their head. No, not after I spent all that time looking for you. Now it's your turn to look for me, and try to stop me if you can. You get one hint. I too was one of your classmates. Godspeed, David. Then the figure laughed a breathy laugh through their nose. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't place their voice. I couldn't even tell if they were a man or woman. They raised the knife, holding the point above my face. Tag. You're it. The knife slid into my eye, and for a split second, I felt nothing but excruciating pain. And then... My alarm was going off. I sat up from my bed, screaming, hands shooting to clutch my face as I frantically gasped for air. I was breathing. I was alive. I was okay, I realised. I let out a long, shaky breath and cursed my vivid imagination. I hadn't had a dream like this for years and hoped my old nightmares weren't returning. My alarm continued to buzz and I felt a moment of confusion. What day was it? Was the reunion tonight then? Wasn't it a weekend? Why was my alarm going off so early? It definitely wasn't 3pm yet. I pulled my hands away from my face and looked to the left of my bed, where my alarm clock should have been on my bedside table. Instead, I saw a wall. Confused and groggy, I looked to my right. There, beside me, was a bedside table that wasn't mine, and on it, an alarm clock that wasn't mine either. I blinked a few times, and then recognised them. But I hadn't had them for many years now, about a decade to be exact. I rubbed my eyes and looked around the room. My room. The room I'd had 
in high school. A moment of panic gripped me, casting away the last of my sleepiness, and I realised that aside from me being back in my parents' house, I should have been back in my hotel room anyways. I threw the covers away and pushed myself out of bed, only to lose my balance and catch the wall for support. My body felt different. Familiar, but different. I stumbled out of my bedroom and across the hall into the bathroom, flicking on the light as I did. In the mirror, I saw myself. Me. High school me. I screamed, loud and without reserve. I screamed, and moments later, I heard the door to my parents' room burst open, and my mother dashed out to find me in the bathroom. I gasped as her arms wrapped around me. David, David, it's okay, it's okay. It was just a dream. Just another dream, she assured me. I could see her face in the mirror, looking so much younger than she had the last time I had seen her. The implications of that only terrified me even more. I stopped screaming, but was shaking, quivering. The other nightmares I used to have started to come back to me. The night of terrors that left me helplessly afraid upon waking. Blood. I always saw blood, and a gun, or a knife, or a bat. Sometimes a truck, or a train. Sometimes I didn't know what it was, but always something hurt me, killed me, and always there was that veiled face, and that whispery voice. How many times have I been killed? I wondered to myself with a quiet sob. How many times have we all been killed? My mother consoled me. Shh, nobody's been killed. You're okay. You're just stressed. Tomorrow's your first day of high school, so it's normal to have bad dreams. It's perfectly normal. In the past, that would have comforted me, helped calm me down. But this time, I knew the truth. They weren't dreams. They were memories. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had fun doing this. I know it's a bit different from my regular content, and some people won't like that, but I feel like moving forward with my channel, I want to mix it up a little bit. I still love making the serious horror story videos, but I want to make some different content on here as well. I feel like I've been doing the same thing for a really long time, and I know some people really enjoy that, but a bunch of people get kind of bored of it and want to see some new stuff. And I want to make some new stuff as well. So thank you guys who stick around and support what I do. I know my sense of humour can be a bit inappropriate and some people don't really enjoy that. But that's fine. You can't please everyone. That's one thing I've learnt on here. I'm just going to have fun with it and anyone who sticks around, I appreciate you guys. And I'm just going to try and create some cool videos and have fun. But with that being said, if you want to support my channel, be sure to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and I will catch you guys next week in the next drawing video. I'll see you then. <coughs> 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 uh, getting down with the sickness. <coughs>